How's it going guys? Joe Sway back again at, with another video on Amy Raw. In this video I want to talk about insecurities and dealing with them. And the thing about it is I, I don't know if there's anybody in this world that doesn't have any insecurities. Um, we live in a world practically designed around being insecure because from the moment we are here, I guess not the, exactly the moment, but I guess even the moment, because we, we, we can read energy, you know, we, we are surrounded by energy, so we can read it, we, we know what everyone is thinking because we are all connected, you know, we are all connected, it's one consciousness, and, you know, in this world, even as little kids, we're being judged, we're being judged by our parents, we're being judged by our teachers, we're being judged, you know, like, we literally go for like, our parents have expectations of us. Schools have expectations of us. You know, there are rules, there are things. We're all, always constantly being told what to do. And even though we come with an inner knowing, an inner knowing that we never lose, but it can get, you know, pushed to the side, you know, by, because we choose to listen to what we're seeing and what we're hearing outside of us. So we stop listening to the voice inside of us because so many people are telling us that we're wrong, that... Okay, there must be something wrong with us, right? Thank you, Teal Swan. Like, I've been listening to Teal Swan for a little bit and really helping me to reflect. But yes, we, we, we've been judged for, for so long. Like, it is tough. It is so ingrained in us that we don't even realize it. That's how we are. We, we humans can sometimes get one track minded or we, we get tunnel vision where we literally take everything and then, okay, so we, we decide that this is how the world is and then we stick to it. And some of us do that for the rest of our lives. We never question anything. We just do. We just follow the crowd. It's monkey see, monkey do. You know that question that says, like, if everyone jumped off a bridge, would you do it? Guess what? <laughs> Most people are jumping off that bridge. I've been vegan for almost three years, right? And at this point, I used to be an angry vegan. And that, you know, that did treat me well for a while. And when I say treat me well, not that it was good for my health, but I learned a lot from it. I learned as to why I'd rather not be so angry. You know, anger is fine. Anger is, is great to be expressed. You know, if you're feeling it, express it. Don't hold it in. But to do things that will make you angry or to focus on things that will make you angry, you're just asking for trouble. You know, you should look up to see what anger does. You know, all disease comes from the brain. The brain is like a chemical factory. Depending on how you're feeling and what you're thinking about, your, your brain will create that disease, it will create it and send it to your body. But it will send it to your body to, to show you something, to tell you something. Your body, is, your, your body is your subconscious mind. It's the physical representation of your subconscious mind. So you need to listen to your body. You need to listen to your heart. You need to listen to how you are feeling. But most of us don't do that. You know, I grew up very insecure. Uh, and I talk about like feeling, in terms of feeling, I'm a Pisces, you know, I did not know much about astrology growing up, and some people don't believe it, some people do, you know what, it is what it is. From my experience, astrology is very real to me, it makes sense, <laughs> you know, for the most part it's made sense, numerology as well makes a lot of sense, you know, I did, uh, I went to numerologist.com and I did the free numerology report that looks at your full name, your date of birth and things like that, and your, and your sex, as well as um, whether you're married or not. And I did it for myself. I've done it three times, and it's so accurate. The first time I did it, I was like, no, this can't be true. Next thing you know, it was true. <laughs> um, like, it came true. It, it came to be uh, what it said. It was so freaking accurate. Um, I, I did it. I had my mom do it. And, oh, my goodness. Hers was on point. Even about her relationship with her, you know, her, even, even about her romantic relationships and her work relationships. Like, it was so accurate, so on point. I'm just like, and I know it was because I had just talked to my mom about some of the things that they talked about, and boom, it was right there. <laughs> so, I'm a Pisces. I'm a, my, I'm a sun Pisces, moon Pisces, and um, Gemini rising. So, I'm great with my voice, great at getting my point across, and I'm very, very emotional. I'm so emotional, like, I'm very, very emotional. Like, I'm an emotional-ass kid. I really am. And the thing is, I try to trick myself into thinking that I'm not. Um, I remember one time I was engaged once and, you know, I ended up breaking it off because I was afraid. You know, I wanted to do it, but my family was like, you know, like no one really supported me other than my uncle. Um, so I just like, I didn't have the strength to kind of go through with it at the time. So I was like, you know what? Because at that point I was still listening to other people to make my decisions for me. I wasn't strong enough to make my own decisions. I wasn't strong enough to make my own mistakes. And my, my mom and my dad don't really want me to make my own mistakes. Uh, they kind of want to tell me what to do and how to live. And it's just, yeah, whatever. People are going to try to tell you what to do. Uh, so yeah, so I, I broke it off out of fear. Now, where was I going with that? Yeah. Um, 
But anyways, yeah, I was engaged. I broke it off because I was afraid. Um, yeah, like, so I was very insecure in my own. Like, I did not really have a lot of faith in myself. I did not have a lot of confidence. I, growing up, I was rejected by a lot, <laughs> a lot of people. Like, most, and I know that that rejection started with myself. I rejected myself because the world didn't make sense to me. The way I thought the world should be, my, like, I was, <laughs> my conscience was just so high since I was a little kid. I always wanted to do the right thing. I always wanted to be good. You know, I, I always wanted to please people. You know, I, I just, I wanted to be nice, but I would find myself doing bad things, you know. But so the, um, which a lot, a lot of us do, we end up doing bad things even though we have a conscience. We don't want to do it, but the world doesn't quite make sense. Things just don't quite add up. It's hard to live consciously in this world when you haven't been given the tools, when all the people around you are kind of living the opposite of that. Like I said, it is that monkey see monkey do. You feel like the outcast and you kind of, you want to belong. Human beings want to belong. And as a kid, you want to be accepted by, you, by your mother and your father. And if you're not, which most of us are not, not that they do it on purpose, but society has kind of brainwashed us into prioritizing other things other than family, other than connection, other than community, you know, other than health. They have prioritized money. They have prioritized, like, just war. They have prioritized guns. They have prioritized everything but what truly matters. They, they're not prioritizing life. You know, we need to start prior, prioritizing life and dealing with our emotions and talking to each other. And we need to stop running away from ourselves. So, yeah, we, we want to be accepted. We want to be part of that community. So, we, as kids, we tend to really just kind of... You know, we, we, do, we don't realize our power. You know, we don't realize our power as kids. We don't know. We, we just, we have this inner knowing, but everyone is telling us that we're wrong. So guess what? We think that there's something wrong with us. And throughout my whole life, I thought there was something wrong with me. You know, my father left when I was around three, so I didn't really have a father figure. My older brother kind of took a lot of damage from that. Um, so he really wasn't there. So it kind of fell on me to take care of literally everyone. Well, take care of, like, to be like the lead, to be the lead. Um, and I really couldn't be the lead because I didn't know anything. Like, I was very smart. I was always smart. You know, I'm, I'm always be, I've always been good at figuring things out. I've always been good at reading energies. Even before I knew what reading energies was, I just kind of had this, this knowing. Um, but I always pushed it, you know, because the knowing that I had, it didn't go fall in line with what everyone else was doing. So I tried my best to live the life the way other people was living and it, I'm telling you it did not work for me at all it did not work for me I was <laughs> heavily depressed but I was very good at hiding you know I just I, I transformed I was like a chameleon you know I, I hid my feelings well because th because the world didn't make sense I had to adjust I had to change how to live in such a world to live in such a world world where people do things like lie to each other and hate each other you know and, and hate you know that's where I grew up you know you know we of course like families Kids, families hit their kids, and then um, in school even, in school, over there, it's, it's allowed. You're allowed to be hit. So I was a kid, I was in school getting hit. Um, so growing up in that world where there's so much violence, so much hatred, so much separation, you know, you kind of have to turn your emotions off. If you don't, then, not that you have to, you shouldn't have to, but as a kid, you don't know any better. So I shut my emotions off from a long, long time ago. And since then, I've like always had trouble expressing my emotions. I remember when I was working in the city, and one of the things that I did bad on, like I did a test on um, personality at my job, and it said that I was bad at expressing my emotions. I was like, really? Am I? And I really am. Like I, I really was. And I'm still, I'm still working on that. I'm still working on that. But I did not want people to know how I felt. I didn't. So I hid my emotions. I, I hid them. I tucked them away. There was a point in my life where, like, I actually talk, I actually wondered to myself, if my mom was to die, would I cry? I asked myself that question, and the answer was, I don't know. That's, like, I didn't cry for years. Like, you know, I did my best to be smart, to, to, be, to do good in school. I did my best to follow the rules, to do what I was told, so that way I wouldn't gather any extra attention, any unwanted attention, because the attention usually would come from a negative standpoint. Maybe if I'm doing bad in school, then I would get hit, or maybe you know I would get yelled at. You know, so I, I did my best to stay out of the way. So I I really never built that connection when I was younger to to my family, um, but I'm building it now. So it's never too late. It's never too late. And also, you know, I've also been working on my new, a new family, like your, your, your soul family, because my family is not really going to be in line with everything that I'm about. 
So I'm gonna find people that are, and I have been. So I have my potluck every month, and these people, they 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 know me. They know me. I think they know me more than my family does, because there's some things that I just haven't disclosed to my family yet, and they found out about them. They were not very happy. So I'm just I'm finding my own family. I'm creating my own way. Um, it's kind of what I have to do, but at the same time, I'm finding a way to kind of mix all the worlds together and just finding myself, getting to know myself and becoming more loving more and more each day. And you know, like I said, I, guess I grew up the whole life just being rejected, just being rejected. Um, so that's still kind of like a part of me, it's still, still something that I'm dealing with. Like you might look at me, you might say like, you know, I'm beautiful, I'm fit, I'm all this stuff. But I have just, I might have just as many insecurities as you do, or maybe more. You know, you might look at a lot of people in this world, like, you see, they got, they, got, they got everything together. They got their shit together, right? But don't believe that. Don't believe what you see on the outside. You know, I'm a person that reads what's going on within. I've met managers. I've met people. I've met, I've met a lot of people that, you know, they have money. They have these things. But I look, at, I look in their eyes, and I see emptiness. I, I don't see happiness. I don't see joy. I don't see, I don't see love. I see fear. I see them hiding from themselves. I see them being reluctant to to be intimate to be close to be naked as i like to call it you know like we hide behind everything you know we hide we like to hide we don't like to show ourselves and i was just like that and this is me like hear me raw you know it's about me expressing myself fully like i don't want to be afraid of expressing who i am i don't, I don't want to be afraid of expressing what i like like i couldn't imagine what it would be like to grow up like as a homosexual you know as you know being gay like, my, my little brother is actually, and I knew from a long, long time. This might be a little too private. I don't know. But <laughs> um, I knew from a while that he was, and I had no issue with it. But, oh, man, you know, most of the world does. Most of the world does, and that's hard. I, I could not imagine what it would been, what it would have been like, you know, to live in that scenario, to grow up and having pr practically the whole world telling you that you are a mistake, that there is something wrong with you, that there's a devil inside of you. Yeah, I've been, I've been called a devil. Like, I've been told that there's a devil inside of you. Really? But it's just so much fear, so much ridiculousness going on in this world. We just need to take a break. We need to slow down. We need to stop judging each other. You know? If you're dealing with insecurity, know that it's okay. It's okay to it's it's okay to have them. You know, everything about you, everything that's an aspect of you, everything everything that you feel, everything that you're thinking, all of it. Everything that's happening around you, it's happening for a reason. But it's just happening for your benefit. It's a reflection of you. It is all you. We need to embrace all aspects of ourselves. We need to embrace the fact that maybe we are a little insecure. Maybe we are stubborn. Maybe, you know, we are, we tend to close ourselves off at times. It's okay. We, we have different personalities. We all have multiple personalities. You know, they, they, they do the whole multiple personality disorder and then give people drugs and all that, and all that stuff. Whoops. Um, but, you know, it's, they, they, they've done a good job at labeling things, at telling us we're this, telling us we're that, and all that good stuff. But not that good stuff, but all that stuff. Um, we need to get away from that. We need to get away from other people telling us about ourselves. And we need to discover who we are. We need to go within and we need to, to love ourselves. You know, we need to take care of ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Those four ways, take care of ourselves in those ways. And we do these practices every single day. So, you know, I'll say some practices that are pretty good. Like, when you go to sleep, do your best to leave your phone away from you so that way you're not there, you know, going through Facebook or Instagram because I find myself doing that sometimes. Put it away so that way you can sleep. Try to get to bed at a, in, on, on time. I believe the hours between 10 and 2 are the best to get the, the most quality sleep, so try not to go to bed too late. Uh, when you wake up, do your best to just jump out of bed. You know, if you just jump out of bed, be happy. And do, be, practice gratitude. You know, start every day by listing things that you are grateful for. And it could be anything. It could be your eyes, your nose, your lips, your the fact that you can breathe. It could be your hair. It could be the house. It could be your bed. It could be the sun. Like, it could be your phone. You know, like, technology is bad sometimes, but it's also good, you know. So there's, there's, it, there's duality in everything. It could be your phone. It could be your laptop. It could be, you know, where you are. It could be across your family, you know. There's so many things to be thankful for, but we tend to focus on the th we tend to focus 
on things that are going wrong. We tend to focus on the negative things and never give praise to the to the to the little things. You know, the the little things make up the big things. So without the little things, we would not have the big things. So in fact, the little things are the big things because the big things would not happen without the little things. It is all one, as you can see. So be thankful for the little things. Be thankful for like the everyday moments, the everyday interactions. Be thankful for like when somebody smiles at you, when somebody gives you a compliment, and give them a compliment right right then, right then and there. You know. It really, if you focus on the little things, if you focus on just being grateful for life, being grateful for yourself, and you do this on a day-to-day -day -day basis, it will help you to be more, you know, comfortable with yourself, to be less insecure. It's also good to be comfortable with your own body. That's why I love naked yoga. I do naked yoga at home a lot, and it just gets me to be connected with my body. I get to look at my body. I get to be connected with it. I get to, like, hug myself and feel myself. And if you look, do the research, there are plenty of benefits to being naked. <laughs> we are animals, and all the other animals in this planet are naked, but except for humans. We we have so much shame towards our bodies, and this shame leads to, like, bad relationship with sexuality on top of other things, like bad sexu um, relationships with porn and things like that. Literally, we, we categorize the naked body as only sexual, but that's not the case. We only get naked to take a shower and to have sex, but that's not, that's not truly the case. Like, if you want to go swimming, if you want to have the best experience swimming, I'm telling you, if you want to have the best experience out in nature, do it naked. Like you'll feel, you'll feel everything. Like your whole skin absorbs sun. Some of us spend our whole lives, unless maybe as a little kid, we got to be naked at the beach or whatever, and that was okay. But we got to test age. Oh no, you cannot be naked. What changed, huh? Um, things like check this out too. In New York, it, it used to actually. Be, I don't, once upon a time, I think it was in New York. It was actually illegal for men to be topless. Yeah, it was illegal, and, they, and the men fought for it, and they were able to be topless. And right now in New York, women are allowed to be topless. In fact, there are a couple of states where women are allowed to be topless. So there's a movement going, and we are waking up together. Uh, we have to start loving ourselves. We have to start praising ourselves. We tend to praise a lot of celebrities, but a lot of that stuff is fake. You know, practice, pla plastic surgery, Photoshop, makeup, all that stuff. A lot of the stuff, like a lot of the bodies that we're seeing, they're not real. They're not real, and we're comparing ourselves to that. So in terms of insecurity, don't compare yourself to anybody. You are unique. You are unique. You wouldn't compare, like even though like we are the same species, but we are all unique on our own. We really are. So we can't compare, like, my body type is going to be different from your body type. Maybe, you know, some people are just naturally skinny, and that's okay. Some people are naturally, um, you know, going to be more athletic, and that's okay. Like, we all have a different body type. Like, we need that duality. We need the um, variety. That's what life is all about. Nothing is the same here. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so, yeah, like, I, I'm all about, you know, being comfortable in your own body. Because, you know what, at all times, guess what, you're always naked. Even when you're wearing clothes, you're naked under the clothes. So if you're not comfortable with your naked body, I'm telling you, man, there's just going to be so many thoughts, so many insecurities that will stem just from that. And even when I was like, you know, I was working out, like, I'm pretty, like, I, I don't really lift weights as much anymore. I'm not really about trying to get big, but I was much bigger. I'm not sure how much I weigh now, but at my heaviest, I was at 180, and I was pretty big. And I was trying to get big. I was insecure. Um... But at that point, I still didn't love myself. You know, it, was, it really wasn't until like I started being naked more than I just, I started looking at my body like, man, like this is an amazing body. And I started figuring out more about my body, how you know how the hair on your you know your hair like is, it's sends information. Your hair is an extension of your nervous system, you know. And of course, I found out about yoga. I found out about all these movements, and and I started feeling all these sensations. And as I went overall, you know, I was you know. Um, I eat mostly fruits. I was raw when I first started. I'm not fully raw anymore, but I still I eat a lot of fruits. And I started noticing more sensations throughout my body. I started feeling better. I started feeling lighter and just growing more appreciation. Another thing that really helped me out too, eating a lot of fruit, guess what? <sighs> no more body odor. Like, I don't have to worry the odor. Like, that's the, that's the thing. We, we don't think about these things. Like, I think about them. I, I look, I make the connections. Imagine, like, to, to figure out that to get out of your house to do something that you love. Maybe you love to play basketball or whatever. Like, you literally have to put on something so that way you don't smell. So that way people don't smell. But, you know, like, our smell is supposed to actually help us to, you know, it, it, it's a part of us. It's a part of, our, it's a part of our identity. Like, it's, it's a part of our expression. You know, like my smell now is natural. I don't cover it. And, you know, I actually smell different to different people, you know. And 
there, there's just so many different scents when, you, when we leave ourselves alone, we become more natural, like, you know, also too, the fact that they have so many of us shaving our bodies, I used to shave my body all the time, when I was younger, a kid told me that, a kid called me a goat, because I, I was growing hair, I'm a pretty hairy person, but not the hairiest person, I've seen hairier people, but um, I was very insecure about my hair. I shaved my hair for years, shaved my chest, my arms. I've shaved my armpits a couple of times, shaved my legs. Like, I used to be, like, naked. And it was, <laughs> there was really, honestly, no benefit to it. Just that because I was just insecure about my hair because that kid called me a goat. I carried that with me. I think I was, like, six or seven when the kid said it. Maybe, yeah, six or seven when the kid said it. And I kept it with me up until about almost two years ago. And then I've stopped shaving, so now I'm feeling better with me as I am. Like, as I am by myself, without any attachments, without anything, I don't need to put on clothes to feel better about myself. I feel great when I'm naked. I don't need to shave my body. I don't need to put makeup on. You know, like, I'm a guy, but some guys, I think, do things. Like, they do their eyebrows and stuff like that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I'm saying, like, I don't need to do any of that to feel good about myself. I didn't do my hair for, like six months and I was just fine with it. I didn't feel negative. Like I'm making strides in terms of my insecurity. I still have some, but I'm making plenty of strides. I'm working on it every single day. And also I'm surrounded by loving people that give me beautiful compliments that help me out. Uh, there's so much that goes into it, but just know that if you're insecure, it's okay. You're not alone. You're not the only one dealing with this, with these insecurities. Just take them one day at a time. Do your best not to compare yourself to anybody. It's not a competition. It's not a race. It is your life. Go at your own pace. Just do your best to make sure that you're moving forward. <laughs> I love you guys. I really do. Um, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button below. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one if you have not already. Of course, follow me on Instagram. That's my number one thing. I have Facebook as well. I'll put all those links in the description below. If you have any questions, any comments, hit me up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. And love. And fruit. Go vegan. It will be the best decision you have ever made. I guarantee it.